Recently, I've begun playing around with electronics again, something I did in my youth. But uh, I've put together several sensors around the house to uh, feed data back to my Raspberry Pi I have on the wall. And, uh, and I serve that up with a web page. But I wanted another way to see the information. So, using this ESP A266 uh, version 1 module and one of these small OLED displays, I've created a marquee. It basically cycles through uh, temperature inside of a chicken coop, the temperature of our pool, temperature in the workshop that I'm in currently, whether our garage doors are shut, what else? Oh, outside temperature and humidity. But obviously, this is not very nice to look at. So, I sketched up an idea of kind of a marquee and I'm going to build it. Create a pattern right here. I'm going to be basically make it out of uh, multiple layered uh, 16th inch basswood. It'll be kind of certain things will be cut out that will be glued together and then stack cut to the final shape and finish. Uh, essentially these drilled holes will be to line up the pieces. The grade parts will all be cut out prior to gluing the stack together. And then the shape will be the final shape will be cut out. A brief explanation about how my marquee works it consists of nothing more than three components. A power supply that's 5 volts to uh, 3.3. The ESP A266 running node MCU. Um, it does a HTTP client request collecting data that's then parsed to drive the OLE display with the I2C interface. Every, I believe I set it to 60 seconds, it pulls new data and this cycles through each display at about 4 seconds I believe I set it to. Before moving on, since this top layer is the only one that's going to have the holes in the top, which I just did kind of for uh, decoration, but I'm not going to have it go all the way through, especially in the bottom here where the wire is actually going to be going down. So before moving on, once I glue it together, I won't be able to uh, clear out these uh, edges with the, the, the frayed and the fuzz from the, from the basswood. Okay, I have my three layers cut out. Um, had to cut out notches here because then this these will be glued together and then I'll cut out that and it gives it a little dimension as it pops off I guess is my idea then this will go here but before gluing everything together I want to size things up make sure it's going to fit so first we're going to take this guy because that's going to be the frame for this and they're actually tight on this side but not that side which is kind of strange so, it'll work. I could actually get it in there and it could actually be what holds it. I think I'll probably just sand just a hair on that side. That looks like where it's tight. And this should line up with how the glass in the front of the... Oops. But since I want that to sit flush with the front of that, I'm going to have to take care of that. So, I'll just step back a second. This will line up flush right here when things are the way I want them. And this will go on the front, framing it and hiding all the ugliness of the uh, wires and connections. In haste, I started pulling off the paper and the, the, the patterns that um, I'm going to need later without realizing it. Obviously in the back I don't need any pattern anymore. But on the front, this is what I'm going to use. I'm just going to use those to line the pattern up. On the front, I still need the bottom part. So I uncrumbled it, put it back on best I could. It still should line up relatively good because the bottom was cut. I lined it up with that. So I'll just glue this all together and put something to press it flat. The glue is dry now. I clamped it up against a, a nice flat surface with a couple pieces of wood over the areas where the drill bits weren't. Hold it tight and flat. In particular because the uh, 
the basswood. Uh, it's pretty flexible when it's in the 16 inch sheets and I want it to come out nice and flat. I'm just going to cut out my finished product here and uh, kind of get a feel for what it's going to look like. Cutting effort, and that will be our little marquee stand. Just have to sand things up a bit. Stand it. Fastwood is not really my favorite wood to work with. I just used it because I could go buy, go to the store and buy 16-inch sheets. I do not like how fuzzy it is and how soft it is. So here we have it or a channel for the wires. We have the opening size to fit the display and kind of hold it in place. Let's give it a try. You know, if you look at it from the side view, there is multiple layers here and that should fit nicely into this shape. We'll just press it in place. Comes out flush. And there's our... There it is. Let's see if our wires fit. Yes, the wires do fit. So, I decided to go ahead right away and make a back piece for this. So I'm going to just glue that on right here, like so. Workshop. Yeah, it's getting a little warm down here. Well, at this point, I have the back glued on, front glued on. The wires are going to stay in there. The top can come off when I, when I do the finishing on it, or the panel. Uh, there's going to be a small base that it sits on that's going to hold the circuit board and stuff. But I want a little standoff that it's going to sit on top of that uh, base. So I'm going to compound scroll the shape that it will then sit inside on top of the base. Just to give the hair more height and well, try and make things look more interesting as well. So here's my finished block that I'm going to work with. The pattern gets folded like this. It would have been beneficial to leave a little piece of paper there for lining up too. And it basically will be attached onto the block, like so. Then we'll cut out each side. Well first we'll cut out the top. Then each side. And then uh, we'll cut across and release the entire block. Still going to use tape on the block, even though the outer pieces of this are not going to be there. I could glue it directly to the block. But the uh, the tape tends to make the blade go through the wood much easier. I'm going to put, uh, just test it out here. Uh, not sure what I'm going to do with the cord or how I'm going to terminate it in the end. I might just try to keep it all together. The side I was going to use for the top and the bottom, I'm switching around. Everything looks square, so I don't, oh, wrong way. I don't think I can fit all these through at once, but I can do something like this. It wouldn't be the end of the world if I had to remake the cables on the other side. And then we try to fit this in. Oh, and it don't fit. Need it a little bigger. I'm going to try hard. The basswood's fairly compressible, so look at that. Squished it right in. So that's where my sign's at at this point. Working on the top of what's going to be the enclosure for the circuit board. Because it's going to be made from 3 fourths inch wood, the, 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 the main body of the enclosure, 
and because the way my circuit board is going to come out with the things coming off the circuit board above and below, I need a full three quarter inches. So to that end, I can't just put a top on a cut open piece of wood. I have to recess it a little bit. So I'm making a top here that's going to go on my piece of wood. The part that's going to house the circuit board and be the base of my stand. I'm going to basically cut the inside out and cut the outside shape. That'll be it. I have the box here. It's going to hold the circuit board. But obviously, you know, I got a pack of a bunch of these circuit boards for a couple bucks from China. They're obviously not going to fit. So I have to cut that down to size and uh, make some holes before screwing it into the board. Started soldering together the circuit board. There's a few modifications I'm going to need to make. One for the cable to come through and wrap around a plug in here for the uh, I2C interface or I squared C, whatever it is. Um, it's also going to be, I'm going to have a, a hole for the power for chaining any other devices or driving the uh, display with an external device if I were to remove the ESP. This will be a jumper to reflash the ESP 8266, and this here is a serial interface as the transmitter receive and the ground brought out so I can program it without uh, taking it out. So I'll be able to flash it, upgrade it, reprogram it, chain other devices off. Everything's removable. Which I could have made it a lot lower profile I guess if I didn't make it removable. But uh, this way if I start another project and need to steal a part, I can. I finished assembling my uh, circuit board here. Um, not the cleanest job, but it is working. So this is going to be mounted on the bottom of the top cover. And I just need to make some holes in here. All right, I have my holes cut out. This needs to be glued on top of here. In case you're wondering, the power source is really just this phone charger I got at Walmart. And uh, USB cable I cut off. I'm going to, before I stain it and finish it, I just want to hook it up once. So, i just take, I'll start by putting the power through. This will probably be kind of hard to put the power in. That's the unit. Alright, so... I really need two of the screws in. Well, technically, you don't even need two. It's also like I was a hair off and where I. Well, here we have the finished marquee. I'm relatively pleased with the results. Everything fits nicely in the base. It cycles through the information that pulls. It should be relatively easy to modify the code so I can display graphics as well as text. So that should be fun. Um, thanks for watching.